So carrying on, we're still thinking about intrarenal AKI here. We've thought about glomerular causes of intrarenal. We've thought about tubular causes. Now we want to think about interstitial causes. So we're carrying on here with interstitial. Interstitial, so affecting the kidneys, the tissue in the kidneys, but not the gemelli or the, the nephrons, it's interstitial. Uh, and this is affecting mostly the connective tissues. In between the, uh, the active components, the nephrons. And this is often mediated through what's called acute interstitial nephritis. So acute means of recent onset, interstitial means the tissues in between the tubules and the gemelli and the nephritis, neph, kidney, itis inflammation of. And this often involves activation of immune cells, so particularly neutrophils, and the eosinophils, two of the, the fills, the only other fill that's not there is the um, basophils. So they're activated immune cells and of course they contain digestive enzymes which can be released into the tissues causing destruction of the interstitial cells. And this is often an immunological reaction. But it's an abnormal hypersensitivity sort of immune not supposed to happen it's a hypersensitivity and this can happen with the non-steroidal non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs again like ibuprofen and dimethacin diclofenac um, what else penicillins have been known to cause this and some diuretics actually just a hypersensitivity probably mediated via autoimmune type mechanisms which is why you get the activation of the neutrophils and the eosinophils I mean these white blood cells are just marvelous against viruses and bacteria but they're also devastating against the body's own tissues if they're used Inappropriately, inappropriately, what might be called friendly fire in military parlance. There's other things can cause this nephritis as well. It, it, it's more likely to occur in diabetes mellitus. Um, sickle cell disease. I mean, it's well known that sickle cell disease causes sickle cell anemia but um, can also cause other problems as well. And again, pyelonephritis. Can contribute towards this acute interstitial nephritis. So that was just to finish off the, um, that was just to finish off the, That bit. That was the intrarenal, the gemellula, the tubular, and the interstitial. So that bit was the interstitial. Now that only leaves us the final component, which is the postrenal causes of acute kidney injury. Postrenal causes. 
and these are developing after the urine has left after the urine has left the kidneys so post renal now this is the last one well of the etiology section post renal Now, we can actually divide the post-renal into intraluminal that is within the lumen of the ureters, the bladder or the urethra or it can be extraluminal. Because the post-renal is always caused by obstruction of the urine after it's been produced. It's post renal. So, intraluminal, we can think about stones, calculi. These are typically formed in the in the calyces, actually, and can pass down into the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. Now the extraluminal is more common, so this can be any external pressure on the tubules, on well the tubes actually, tubules as microscopic, tubes and macroscopic. So there could be a pelvic pressure. Or pressure in the lower abdomen tumours for example. Could press on the ureters. But actually this would only cause a problem if both ureters were affected. The pressure would have to affect both ureters because um, there's the bladder and the urethra. They're going behind down here because you can survive fine on, on one kidney, that, that's okay. So unless the cause of the pressure was bilateral on the ureters, it wouldn't cause an acute kidney injury. So more, more commonly we're dealing with problems of the urethra. And in men, the top of the urethra is surrounded, surrounded by this gland. It surrounds it completely. So when the gland enlarges it, squeezes on the urethra, narrowing the urethra here. All men get this, all men over the age of 40 have got some prostatic enlargement, certainly they're over the age of 45, you're going to get prostatic enlargement. So if you meet a man in their 50s and the 60s, it's guaranteed they've got prostatic enlargement. The prostate gland produces part of the fluid component of seminal fluid. That's what it's for. But then there's testosterone effects and we develop this benign prostatic hyperplasia. A hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells present. It's not a hypertrophy. Hypertrophy would mean the cells get bigger. It's a hyperplasia. The testosterone causes excessive mitotic activity in these cells. It can be malignant, of course. I mean, you can get um, malignant problems in the prostate as well. Absolutely, you can. And that causes the damming back of urine. The urine dams back up into the... Um, Dams back up the. So the urine can't get out of there, the bladder fills up. It's okay to begin with, the bladder just stretches, but when you get about 900 mils in the bladder, that starts damming back up into the ureters. You get a hydro ureter. So first you get a hydro ureter. Then it dams back up into the kidneys. 
and that's a hydronevrosis. And that's going to, as we've looked at the previous videos, dam back up into the tubules, increase the pressure in the tubule, prevent the formation of glomerular filtrate, and will lead to renal failure. There'll be an acute kidney injury. And if it's not treated, this, of course, is a cause of death. So that was post-renal, which is quite simple. So there we are, acute kidney injury. That one, the first one, acute kidney injury. Pre-renal, intra-renal, or post-renal.